Hello viewers, welcome back to my channel. Today's topic of discussion is on the intra-domain routing protocol and the name of the protocol is RIP, Routing Information Protocol. This is the most widely used intra-domain routing protocol and this particular protocol is based on the distance vector routing. So, continuously for the past 3 to 4 video lecture sessions, I have started telling you about the distance vector routing and to solve any uh, problem on distance vector routing algorithm, always in the question there was a uh, graph given, okay, not the actual network. So, we are representing the network with a weighted graph. So, normally this is how the routers were represented as the nodes and uh, sorry, the vertices of the graph and the edges on the graph indicates the links that are there, the different networks that are present here in the network. So, now when you are studying the routing information protocol, the actual protocol that is used in the intra-domain routing. So, you need to know what you need to learn with an actual network. So, this is one example here. Basically, like to learn the different uh, uh, characteristics and properties of the routing information protocol, you need to first learn one important term here and that term is called as the cost. So, when you were earlier carrying out the different uh, examples using the distance vector routing, there was some weight, some cost, okay, some numbers that were represented on the edges of the graph. So, that was indicating as what, that was indicate, that means what, it is a cost, cost for that particular uh, node to reach the other node. So, this cost is defined in routing information protocol as the number of hops that is the number of networks a packet needs to travel from the source router to the final destination host. Look at the definition. It is the number of hops, okay, and the that is number of hops indicates what the number of networks a packet has to travel from the source router, source router to reach to the final destination host, host or how to calculate the number of hops between the different routers, then it is easy for you to construct the routing table for the different routers. Now, in this example, suppose if you have to indicate the number of hop for this router R3 to reach the destination host and the destination host is present in which one? The network N4. So, how, what is the, this one, the number of hops is what? In this case, it is one hop and the network is N4. For this router to reach the destination host, how many hops are there? Number of networks it travels, the packet travels. So, here this is one network and the next one will be what? The network which has got the destination host. So, here it will be what? Two hops. For the router R2, it needs two hops to reach to the destination and the network which the packet travels is N3 and N4. What about R1? Now, R1 is here and R1 has the packet that comes from R1 has to travel the network N2, N3 and finally, you have to include the destination network also. So, it is what? Three hops and the networks are N2, N3 and N4. Now, this packet which starts okay from this particular router R1 is originating because definitely this network is connected to R1 and the packet will travel what the networks that are coming on its way to reach to the destination. That is the reason this is also counted as one hop here. But this particular thing the router is what it is connected to this, this R1 is the default router for the source. Okay, that is the reason now you have to start including this as one hop, this is the second hop and the third one is what the destination network which is the destination host which is connected to the N4. So, this is how you need to find out the number of hops. Now, to construct the routing table, now in this particular network whatever is given, you have three route, three different uh, this one uh, routers here. So, you will be constructing what three uh, the routing table for each of the routers. So, routing table for R1 routing table for R1. How do you construct? Always remember you are going to write what? The destination. So, it is based on this in routing information protocol is based on the distance vector routing and in the distance vector routing what is that you have done? You were including three columns, is not it? The destination network, the next stop and the cost. Similarly, here also you are writing what? The destination network, fine. The next router and the cost. You need to fill these three. Now, this particular network is having how many networks 
four networks. So definitely first and foremost thing in the routing table is you have to include all the destination, all the possible destination networks here. So in this case or for each of the routers you will be having all the four networks. What is the next router? Now what is the cost? So t to reach this R1 you are constructing what the routing table for R1. R1 to reach network N1. The network N1 is connected to router, the default router for our, uh, network N1 is R1 itself. So, the next router will be what? Dash, it is not, a, but the cost will be what? 1. What about N2? The N2, once again, it is connected to the router R1. So, next router will be nil here, whereas the cost will be once again what? It takes a cost of 1 here, 1 network. That means, reaching that network, the destination network is counted as one hop. Then comes N3. N3, to reach N3, the next router will be what? R2. And what will be the cost? Look here. What will be the cost for this one? This is one network and the second, the destination network will be N. So, 2. Now, what about reaching N4? For R1 to reach N4, it has to, the packet has to travel network, this particular hop 1, 2 and 3. So, the cost is 3, but the next router is what? R2. Isn't it? So, this is very simple, same thing, whatever you have learnt in the distance vector routing algorithm, the example, you are writing actually here what the router names, there you used to write the vertices name because the given was what the graph, okay, the weighted graph, the network is represented as a weighted graph and so that is why you were using the letters A, B, C, D as the vertices of the graph and the on the edges was the cost. Now, here what actually we are doing is the edge itself is what, that is the network here is not it the LAN. So, that particular thing is indicated in the diagram. So, look at the diagram, write the actual values here. Similarly, now construct the routing table for R2. R2, you are going to write it what? 3 columns, destination network, next router, fine and what? The cost, destination network. Now, possible networks in the network graph, sorry, in the given network N1, N2, N3 and N4, all four are there. So, what is that you are going to write the values here? Routing table for R2 to reach the network uh, N1. N1 is 1 and 2, the cost is 2. To reach N1, the next stop will be what? R1. What about N2? N2 is directly connected, so the cost is 1. What about N3? Directly connected, cost is 1. What about N4? The next router is R3 and the cost is this network and this. So, you will be writing. Very simple. Next is you are writing the routing table for R3. So, in this particular diagram, uh, there are 3 routers. So, you will have what? 3 tables. So, let us quickly fill the values. Fine. Uh, destination network, next router and the cost destination network which are the possible networks n1 n2 n3 and n4 okay and you are going to write the values r3 is here to reach n1 1 2 3 3 hops that is the cost is 3 and for r3 the next router is what r2 what about n2 n2 is here so 2 hops and the next router is r2 what about n3 n3 is here directly connected and the cost is 1. N4 connected directly then the cost is 1. This is how you have to construct the routing tables for all the 3 routers here in this example. So, any given network you just see if you know how to find the number of hops very easily and correctly you can write down the routing tables. This is about the routing information protocol. When it comes to implementation remember routing information protocol runs at the application layer. So, if it, if it runs in the application layer, definitely it needs a protocol at the transport layer to encapsulate its message. Hope you remember the TCP application layer, transport layer and network layer. At present, what you are doing is, in the network layer, the routing tables for the routers are getting constructed. And which protocol is carrying out this? RIP. But RIP what? Works at, uh, runs at the application layer. So, what it will do is, it will make use of the protocol that is present in the transport layer. So, it, it uh, all the messages of RIP are encapsulated in the UDP, user datagrams, okay, from the transport layer, it makes use of the 
UDP. In turn, UDP messages are encapsulated in the IP datagrams. So, this is how. So, this RIP is finally what? Constructing the routing tables at the network layer. Next part of the RIP, you should know about the message format. See how this routing tables are getting constructed because the routers are sending their information to their neighbors. Okay, there how they are connected with each other network, that particular information is uh, sent to their neighbors. Now, what is that? How it is sent means it definitely a request message has to come and the router has to reply. So, that reply is called as the response message. So, let us see the packet format or the message format for RIP. Look here, 8 bits are meant for what the command, COM stands for command. Now, command is what the messages. So, what is that I told? Uh, this particular routers are sending e to each other their routing information. When the messages are sent to each other, it is actually what based on the request. Suppose if R1 is making a request to R2, you please send your routing information, then R2 will respond it with a reply, isn't it? So, we say there are two types of messages. One is the request message and another is what the response message. So, that is why you have to learn. remember this messages are of two types, the request message and the response message. And once again, in the response, there are two types, solicited message and unsolicited message. So, what is the difference between these two? I will tell you. If there is a request from R1, that is from one router to another router, then and the response comes only after the request is made, we say it is a solicited response. Otherwise, if without any request made from any other router, if the routers are sending what the responses that is their routing information every 30 seconds, that is periodically actually the router starts sending the routi routing information every 30 seconds. So, that type of response is called as unsolicited response. So, two types of responses, solicited comes only after a request is made, unsolicited is without any request also periodically the routers will be sending the routing information and the message format is in this manner. 8 bits are for the message type, the message will be either the request message or the response message and the version for this is RIP version 2 and the res this uh, remain 16 bits are reserved. The family is the TCP IP, okay, Proto uh, TCP IP protocol suit. So, the value for the TCP IP protocol suit is 2 here. So, that number will be indicated. Tag indicates information about the autonomous system. Remember, RIP is what working in smaller autonomous system. So, what is the information about that autonomous system will be included in this particular field. Then you have the network address. See, now the remaining things you just look here, the routing information, the routing table consists of what? The network address, the next router, next router and the cost. Same thing is here, network address, next stop address is what? The next router, distance is what? The cost. And the subnet mask should also be included here. For every network you know without that, you will never come to know how many possible hosts are present in that network. So, in that particular way, these four things are there definitely. So, that is why we are telling actually these, these fields will get repeated for every message. Okay. So, this is how the routing information protocol works. So, hope the explanation for routing information protocol is clear to you all. Thank you. Bye-bye. Take care.